indeed there is no other name that we can give you because all the good names are yours that's why we are here this morning lord just to declare that name that's above every other name just to say that lord your name is so good and anyone who will encounter with your name his life changes anyone who call upon your name Lord, you manifest yourself. We thank you, Father, and we honor you because there is no other God than you, Jehovah. You are the only God who never shared the glory with anyone else. Father, we thank you that you have called us by your name and indeed we are here to listen from your word. Father, we call you anointing spirit Jesus told us that I am going, but I am going to send the helper. I am going to send the counselor. Jehovah God, we call upon your Holy Spirit to reveal your name to us. We call upon your Holy Spirit to reveal to us things that are hidden in secret. That Lord, we may know you more and we may magnify your name, O Jehovah. Father, we adore you and we bless you because you are God. We thank you, Lord, that you have called us from each and every place we came from. Just we are here, not because of our friends, not because of anything else, but because of your name. It is the name, that name that Jesus said, the name that Father gave me, that name has no power. That name has more power. That when we call upon that name, every darkness scatter and the light come in place. When we call upon that name, the sicknesses disappear and the healing comes. When we call upon that name, every stress, every challenges we go through just disappear and the strength of God come and that hope that come to hold us, it is that name. We thank you, Father, that this morning we are here just because of that name. No wonder you have called all the good names. You have called the Alpha and the Omega. You have called Jehovah Nis. You have called Jehovah Rapha. You have called Jehovah Elohim. You have called Jehovah El Shaddai. That Lord, you are the beginning and the end. No wonder your son is called, is called Lord. He's called the King of Kings. Father, we thank you. This morning, we thank you for that name. May that name just cover each and every one of us now in this sanctuary. May that name minister to each and every one of us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, those who are here and are stressed because of the bitterness of this world, let that name come in their hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit, that they may encounter the joy, they may, they may encounter the, the completeness of peace in their hearts. No wonder no wealth can give us peace. No titles can give us peace. Only that name of Jesus Christ that gives us peace. We thank you, God, that in you, you saw it fit to send your only begotten Jesus Christ to come and die for our sins. And today we celebrate the fourth Sunday since your, since your son came and said, Lord, into your hands I place my spirit. And it is finished what you sent me to accomplish. Today, we can meet the Lord in our own way and call upon his name. And indeed, he will hear and answer us. We thank you, Father, because you are God. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Kindly have your seats. Praise God. Amen. Today, we are continuing with our topic we shared on last Sunday that overcoming the challenges that comes with death. 
overcoming the challenges that come by debt. And I just want to say, before I get into my sermon, I just want to say, for the sake of anyone who is worshiping with us for the first time, my name is Jackson Wanga, and I love, above all, I love Christ as my personal savior, who saved me when I was still a young boy in Form 1, and I have never regretted walking this journey of the cross. Challenges come, but he fight for me. And I am so, so grateful that he came and died just for me. Last week we talked, our, our main text was Romans 13 verse 8, where the Bible says, Oh, no one are dead except the death of love. And we talked about that debts can cause you to die poor. Deaths have costed people to die of heart attack. Not because they had heart problem, but something came and hit them. And this because of deaths, they collapsed and died. And we say that let's be careful that we take only healthy deaths. Don't borrow money that will not pay itself. Praise God. Don't borrow money that will not pay itself. That money will lead you, throw you into a quagmire of debts. And online is one way that is positioned to destroy you. When you borrow a case in Pesa, you borrow in Mshuahi, you borrow in Tala, you borrow in Flisa, you borrow in the Hasala Fund, and they cannot pay themselves. You, what you will do, when you get money, you will pay KCB Mpesa. After you have take, paid KCB Mpesa, tendency will be for you to pay Mshuahi. You cannot borrow. You cannot borrow exactly to pay. I'm sure you will borrow. You will borrow high ex, a, a little bit more, so that when you pay, I'm sure you remain with some to survive on. Are we together? And that's how the online debts come to a level that you cannot manage them. Every time you are borrowing to pay another one, you borrow higher, and you you began with two thousand, but today you are in fifty thousand. Because that you are now a slave of those things. And many people are going to suffer because of that. A time is coming. You will be looking for a passport to go outside this nation. And you will never travel because of those debts that you are borrowing online. Borrow money that will pay itself. And we read Psalms 37 verse 21. Psalms 37 verse 21 says, The wicked borrow and do not pay. Imagine as Christians, we began it very well thinking that we were borrowing to pay. Then we failed to pay. Today we are called wicked. That when you borrow and you do not pay, you are a wicked. And therefore, debts are dangerous. Remember that when you are getting money and you pay debts, possibilities that you will die poor, whether you want or not. Because debts prolong your life, prolong you, you prolong, you take time to, to be repaid. But you are tired, your years are going. I know people who realize, who are employed, they realize 60 years is nearing and they are still having a huge debt. And they retire and all their retirement benefits end up paying that debt. Learn to live within your limit, praise God. Living in your limit is just for a short while. You will live, live in your limit just for a short while and later on, once you have made it, 
then you can live a life the way you wish, so wish. Denying yourself for a short while is better than getting into a debt that you will not manage to pay. And I said that before this government came in place, many people were in CRBs who went wrong. Then this Hassanah government told us, it removed, helped, told, told these people to remove our names from CRBs in York. Then they came up with what is called Hassanah funds. You think they were helping you. You will realize that they are going now to take you to the grave. That has an funds you are borrowing. So some began with 500 of the minimum. I know some who are already in 5,000. So it's growing. And the money is sweet. The more you borrow, it's so sweet. You realize you are in hundreds of thousands, then you cannot borrow. Now the same people who removed you from CRB will take you to CRB, whether you want or not. God is at the field. It will reach a time that you will need even to import something, but you will not import it. Because of that CIB, they, you see now this government is going online. Everything, your details are online. If I want to know you are dead, you are age, I want to know anything, I just Google your name and I will get it. If you ever registered for, in a, the former government here, registered is called what? Three cards. Huduma number. If you have gotten the digital uh, passport, if you have gotten the digital driving license, you don't need to hide anything. And that's why thieves don't have IDs. Thieves don't have any government document. Because thieves, they know that that document will kill, they will make them to get you. Do you know the people who were killed in, in Kilifi? The first thing these people said, cults were telling them, sell your house. Yes, in the in Acts, people were selling some of their property to support the ministry of God. Praise God. But you are not selling everything to give to God. Go and eat that field. They were selling part of their properties to make God's ministry go. And even in this nation, many people have given out their piece of land for the church construction. wrong? But they have not given out the entire piece of their piece of land, no. But these deaths are also causing people to become psychologically sick. People borrow money and they cannot pay them then they become psychological sick and then later on they get into cults i told you last week that when you borrow you go to bank to borrow money they don't tell that this money will pay it in four years they don't talk about years years look so big because if you are 40 when I say Motalifa, come on the mortgage, they begin from eight, eight years, isn't it? To around 14 years. And then you imagine that I'm buy, taking a mortgage or a house to pay 10 years. When I say Mapan. They talk of months. They tell you this loan, you will pay it in 48 months. 48 months looks smaller than four years. Okay, wrong. And that is why no bank will tell you talk of years. No bank talk about talk about months so that we will fall into their culprit. Because time is gone, I want to go to the text that was read to us. We can see the consequences of deaths. This was a prophet of God, was a mchungaji like me. He had two sons and he had a wife. He borrowed, and I'm sure maybe the wife was not aware or the children are not aware that he had borrowed the money. He, he over borrowed without knowing how to repay this money. I doubt. You borrow money that can pay themselves. If it is for Biashara, 
The owner can come for the business and leave your wife and children. Go and enter to you. If it is a, a piece of land, the owner of the money can come for the piece of land and they don't interfere with your family. Borrow money that will pay itself. This man borrowed the money and he is not unable to pay. In theological terms, we say he was a careless priest. In business language, I mean, we say he was a careless priest. He was a flamboyant priest who needed to live so huge, but his income was so little. If he was mutu wa dunia tungesema, alikuwa na wanawake wengi, wa alikuwa mulevi, so he bore, he overboard without planning. If he was borrowing money, and look what the wife is saying, that what he has, new man is only a little flour and a little oil in the jug, and his two sons. What is that view? Meaning he has nothing else that he can tell the, the, the lender that take this and leave us. Ukweru wrong. Sangekuwa na kitu ingina ngewambia. But he has given up. But thank that our God is faithful. May, may I be Elijah coming to tell you that my brother, don't over borrow. Don't borrow money that you will not pay. That money will take you into a bad man. Him was the God sent Elijah. And Elijah was Elisha I mean Elisha was a blessing to him. God sent Elisha, go to this area, you will get some of a widow who will feed you. But when he got this widow, the widow is complaining of the little he has. But the widow had faith in the Lord. What I yes as feel. What we need is faith in the Lord, not to seek miracle. God told Abraham, I bless you. That is why priests don't bless you by saying, May you go and receive a miracle. He said, May the Lord bless you. This woman had faith in the Lord that when Elisha told him, that little one, bake for me dogo and then bake for your children. And this woman had faith and gave Mambi, you man, you are stupid. I am talking of dying and you are telling me to give you food. But he said, he went ahead, baked little food, full of uh, uh, bread, and gave Elisha. And Elisha ate. And then he baked the remaining, and she ate with her children. Meaning that the little flour was, and the little oil in the jar was, so she had nothing. It is that time that the Lord visited them. And Elisha told the woman, send your children to bore to get all the jars around. And the oil was filled. That is the miracle. This woman had faith in the Lord. This woman was not looking for miracle. But this woman was had faith, and it is faith that costed her to make a little bread for Elisha. If it was not faith, she would not have done that. Brothers and sisters, when we plan well, this man left his wife and the children into a quagmire of debts that they could not pay. The question is, if you died today, do you think that your family will be safe? If it will not be safe, think about it. I told you online platform how they mess up people's names. I told you last week how when you have borrowed, these people hack into your phone and they call people, you are, you are people in your list, you are, it's called what? Phone book. They call anyone without knowing who they are. 
Imagine if somebody called my bishop, and you know he doesn't use my bishop because he's just a, a person in my phone book. And he told him, hey, well, because I see uh, it, true color, it on Yesha Jinayaki. And you guaranteed Jackson, please tell Jackson to pay my debt. How will he feel? That I took his name and guarantee, used his name as guarantee. You get it? I know. Somebody called me than me. Because a friend of mine, I I So if that's embarrassing, that can bring embarrassing. That will make your your self-esteem die. Imagine you don't ringanga. You don't ringanga. And I was scared of Christ or scared of the PU or Simu. We know me 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 kada kuli pa madeni. So what I'm checking here, but then I'm going to Roma. That is so how debts can do. Let us avoid debts that cannot pay for themselves. And you have heard me pray to you and say, May the Lord help you not to borrow money for bus fare, not to borrow money for food, not to borrow money for airtime. O kilala siku moja njia hauta kufa hata mtoto wa miezi tano hata kufa kilala njia siku moja uko ni roho Mimi nimeenda kwa mlima uko na nimeona watoto walikuwa wakifasti pia Si wale wa kilifa na wakufu At least three days you cannot die Kwanza ndio kikunywa maji ni behave you are intestine itaosho vizuri Itakuwa kile Let me tell you, if you ate vegetable from January to December, no one will notice. Plus, they all eat meat. Because a time will come that you will eat meat from January to December, if you so, if you so wish. But learning to live within yourself. When you do that, the Lord Almighty will bless you. Cut out all your unnecessary expenses. Those are necessary expenses. Cut them down. Live within your income. I never exceed it. This is not for life. It's just for a short life. Once you have lived within your expenses and you, produce, you say tomorrow you will have more than enough, you will be a person that people will desire to live near you because you purpose to live. If you don't need it, don't buy. And I told you don't go to a supermarket when you are hungry. Please don't go to a supermarket when you are hungry. Eat something before you go to a supermarket. Supermarket when you go when you are hungry. You know in a pangwanga specifically to attract your eyes. It's a bit to see the single kwa kiosi kitu. Where is that view? Like it is in a pang was in a panguza na kitaba yiko that mafuta. Can I okay allow an eka light is in a kama hiyo roof up? Sinatoa ka light kazuri. On a command, you will overspend because you are hungry. Live within your limit and you will be completed. You will be complete and you will live a free life, a stress free life. Maisha ambayo haina aibu, maisha ambayo haina kutolala uzingizi. I told you last week, I also I, I found myself in a debt. Nilikuwa na case bia mshwari, nilikuwa na, na mshwari na case bia mpesa. Hiyo pesa ilinipeleka for seven years. Nilikuwa nikipata kamshara kidogo ninalipa hii. Nikimaliza kulipa hii, sasa ninakopa tena kisaidi nilipe hii nyingine. So I kept on increasing kila wakati pe mlo naongeza because nataka ku back with extra. Niliomba Mungu remove me from these things. Remove me from these things and I prayed God, please Never even remind me that they exist. If I need money, let me go borrow into a circle. But not to borrow online. Online will kill you. You will start looking for miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Father, we thank you and we bless you that you are good. That you are love and you are forever. We help us, Lord, to live within our means. Our, our, our means. Father, we pray that those who are struggling here now with debts, which they know sincerely that the debts they borrowed was not for business, 
was not for pieces of land, was not for constructions, but the debt they borrowed was for food, was to buy a good phone, was to buy a good clothes or dress like the other one to compete. And now, Lord, they are under stress even they cannot give you are all, they cannot give better offering and time. They cannot pay school fees for their children. Father, I pray that you heal them and enable them, Lord, to clear and to forget about those things. The purpose of those things, Lord, is to render people poor. Teach them, Lord, to, num- to know how to number their days so that they may spend them wisely even as they borrow. Bless us as we go through our day-to-day life. And let us not, Lord, find to be found ourselves in the state of the prophet who left his wife and two sons with a debt. And Lord, let him move our name from what Psalm 7 verse 21 says, that we are wicked because we have not been paying debts. Father, forgive us and help us to pay our debts so that we can live a free life. For this we pray in Jesus' name.